to respect. And here's what I believe he meant. He said, you know what, just wait a second before I do this miracle because I want it to get to the place where I want everybody to know that nobody else gets the glory or the honor or, or the praise for it. I want everybody to know that only I can get to that point point. I'm the only one that can do it. I'm the only one that can do it. Then can you imagine what it was like around the workplace then, the next day, or maybe later in the evening when it was all over with, what it was like? Let me tell you what happens next. You change on the inside, the relationship changes, then all of a sudden your conversation changes. Amen. You're not worried about sports. You're not worried about, I mean, nothing wrong with sports, nothing wrong with that. But, but all of a sudden the conversation, hey, let me tell you about this man named Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you about this man that come to this wedding who he just walked in and we don't know what he did. All I know is one second there was water and the next day was wine. Well, what did he do? Did he change the pot? No, he turned the water into wine. What? I got to know this man. Who is it? And all of a sudden they start to come one by one. This is the way I feel about a service. This is the way I feel about a community. It takes time, but a little bit at a time. But you begin to tell people that your conversation has changed. You've changed. The relationship changed. So now somebody help me preach. Your conversation begins to change. You begin to say, you know what? Let me tell you about this man, a man like I've never seen. I just went to a wedding just like any other wedding. But there was this man that showed up. This this great man, this man that has all power, this man that speaks one word, and every really, yeah, really, and everything begins to change. You, see, you mean to tell me that he turned the water into wine? Yeah, and I'll tell you what happened a little bit later. He walked on the water. Let me tell you what he did a little bit later. He walked on the ocean out there in the middle of the storm. He spoke to the sea, and he, I said, now I want to know who this man is, and they begin to come. And they begin to be saved. They begin to be delivered. And the conversation begins to change. Oh, can I preach tonight? The conversation now is not a conversation of the world. The conversation is supernatural. The conversation is supernatural. The conversation is heavenly. The conversation is where we are. Our citizenship is in heaven. And the conversation begins to be about the one. Begins to be about the only one. The only one that can save. The only one that can heal. The only one that can deliver and you begin to talk about God and, wait a second and brag on God and everything begins to change come on somebody come on and help me preach give our God praise come on give him another praise then we come into church I'm talking to him as a church then we come into the house of God and it's not church as usual anymore. My next point about this message is there was another change. The atmosphere had changed. There was now not an atmosphere of just ho-hum. There was an atmosphere of expectancy. There, there was an atmosphere of expectancy. There, the atmosphere had changed. The, the place that he was when he walked in, let me tell you right now, remember what we sung the other day? The other night, the Lord spoke to me that time, said, I want you to sing Holy Ground. We began to sing that song, and the atmosphere began to change. You can feel the change in the spiritual atmosphere when God gets to moving and God gets to rolling. You remember the time that the angel, he wanted the angel, said, I've been waiting for the angel to trouble the wall. You don't have to wait for an angel no more now, sweetheart. God's here himself, amen. And the only thing that's going to be troubled now is going to be the devil and all of the powers of hell because this is God's day. This is God's time. God told that woman, you know what? When you put a demand on God, when you put your faith on God and the faith demands and pulls the power out from him and pulls the miracles out from him and pulls the glory and the manifested prayer. Your faith says, he said, it may not be my hour, but because of your faith, because you're believing me, because you're praising me, my God, because you're worshiping me, praise God Almighty. He said, I'll do it anyway. I'll do it in a season that you don't even expect. I'll do it in a time that you don't even look for. My God, he said, I'll do it because you're drawn Lord and glory to God out of me. Well, somebody give our God break. You're drawing it out. I said you're putting a man on my power. I got mad in here the other night at God about a handful of months ago. I was mad. Here's what I told him. I said, God, I said, I've been here a long time. I said, I'm tired. 
I said, it's preached to Nancy Pugh. And I said, you fill this place up. And I said, you do it quickly. And he said, okay. And he's done it. He did it. He's doing it quickly. He's doing it now. I said, God, I'm, I'm tired of walking into a church and people don't get excited. It's time to get excited. It's time to get alive. I said, it's time to come alive. I have had a lot of people walk with you know, my kids for a lot of times in the morning, especially on Mondays, man. I'll get coming from that seat and I ain't kidding. I'll just, they'll walk by me and say, love you. Hey, preacher, wake up. Hey, church, it's time to wake up. Amen. We know, we know, we, it's time not to get so comfortable. Right. We, hey, it's time to get up. Yeah, I had to get up. When I started walking, I woke up. When I started moving, I woke up. It's time to start moving. Start walking closer to God. Start moving closer to God. Can't sit down on Him now. Come on. Can't sit down on Him now. What that must have been like. I don't want you to think about what that must have been like. I mean, they, 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 they were all privy to it. They were, they were there, Brother Harold. They were watching this. I mean, they were right there. And they, all these other, they're back there with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And, and, there, and there ain't no telling what else they were talking about. But I do know one thing. The atmosphere sure did change. And when the atmosphere changed, it would never be the same again. As a matter of fact, it was such an incredible miracle that it's in the Bible forever. You know, let me tell you what really made it great. You remember the first time, the first miracle? I remember the first miracle that Jesus ever performed for me. I remember it. Financially, man, I was in trouble. I remember that miracle. I needed a. This guy was in, this guy was in debt, and he needed this huge, huge loan. I never forget one of the hardest things I've ever prayed about in my life. It took a long time, you know. What out of the blue, the guy wasn't supposed to get. He got the loan, and and thank God, my daddy would have killed me because he just come and he got his money. It was a miracle. He, I know it was from God. You know what I did with that money that he gave me? I, I, I sold every bit of it to God. Every every last thing. I didn't have a dime. I, I still gave it to God because I knew that He had done it. You say, what's that got to do with this message? The atmosphere changed. Everything about my life would change. He would show me that I could trust him, and, and that was one of the hardest battles I'd ever been in in my life. It could have been anything. I had another one one time with my health. It took a long, long, longest battle I was ever in, but it wasn't God's fault. It was my fault. It wasn't God's uh, problem. It was my problem. Because God had already made the way for me to be healed. God had already done everything. It was my problem. Because my faith, I believe, wasn't where it needed to be. But it, it, one day, I just had it out. My, when, he, when he upset my wife down there at the apple cart down there in Alabama, and when I got this as serious as I've ever been with God, you know, these people, they believed on God. From this point, they began to be serious about their relationship with God. It'll make you serious. Amen. You know, it'll make you put everything, listen to me, listen to me. It'll make you put everything else on the back burner before you put God on the back burner. Amen. And we've all done it. I'm guilty that you say, you preach it. We've all put him on the back burner. But he'll let you know when you do. Amen. But my point is, is, is there is such a great change that took place. The greatest thing about them, though, Bill, different. You know, we got a spirit. They were with him person to person. Flesh to flesh. Eyeball to eyeball. And he was, I'm sure he was laughing, having a good time at that wedding. Jesus wasn't some sour prune like all these theologians call him. He'll kill you. He'll, 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 he'll kick you out. No, he won't. He'll turn your water into wine is what he'll do. He'll turn your wreck into a check. Come on, somebody. God will turn your wreck into a check. He'll turn your life around. He'll, he might turn your life over before he turns it around, but thank God he ain't going to leave you turned over. He's going to turn you back around before he'll leave you turned over. That's the God I believe in and the God I serve. Yes, Lord. He told me right now, he said, I want you to remind him. He said, I didn't come. He told me this now. I didn't come, he said, tell him to condemn the world. If I was going to kill you and throw you into hell, all of us would be in hell right now. But God said, I didn't come to make you die. I didn't come to destroy you. I come to give you life. Glory to God. I come to redeem you. Hallelujah. I come to bless you. That's the God I serve and the God that you serve. People will hurt you. People will lie to you. People will let you down. I'll let you down. But thank God Almighty, Jesus said, I'll lift you up. Amen. And if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. He'll give you favor. He'll give you favor with Pharaoh. He'll give you favor with the king. He'll give you favor with that hard boss. He'll give you favor again, praise God, with that, that unminded preacher. Amen. He'll give you favor in the midst of your enemies. He'll give you favor because there's nobody like him. He'll change the situation is my next point. He'll change the situation. 
the report, the doctor's report. The, when, the, when the bankers are knocking on your door, the creditors, God said, I done took his debt. I got something in store for you. I'm going to work it out. I'm going to save you. And when you believe him, he'll do it. If you don't believe him, then it may take a little bit longer. The beginning of miracle did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. Hallelujah to God. Whew, I said, that's, what, that's a great scripture. The first thing that he ever did, he goes to a wedding, just because he was invited, watch this, and because he's so good, he said, it ain't going to cost you nothing. Mm -mm. You're not going to have to try to work it up. Mm -mm. He said, I'm just going to change it because I can. I don't think you heard me. I said, it ain't going to cost you nothing. You ain't going to have to pay denarii or whatever they paid back then to get that wine to the governor, you ain't going to have to work it up. He's just going to do it because he loves you. Amen. He's just going to do it sometimes because he can. His disciples believed on him. But here's the greatest part of it all and the most important part of the message. He changed the outcome of what it would have been like. Glory to God. He changed the outcome. We cried and snotted and snooked around, got mad at him, Got mad at the preacher. Come on, talking to people. God said, don't worry. I'm going to change the outcome. One time, some of y'all in here, you were on your way to hell. God said, don't worry. I'm going to change that outcome. One time, you were sick and afflicted in your body. But God said, don't worry. I'm going to change the outcome. Amen. But most of all, what he did for us, he'll not only do it once, Kathy, but he'll do it time time, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost, and time, and time, and time again. He won't just do it once. You know how many gallons of water was in that sucker? 162 gallons. 162 gallons of water. Boys, what I'm trying to tell you, ladies and men, we don't have to worry about it being a flood. He said, just dive on in. There's more there is. It ain't going to just, it's not going to just end. It never is going to end. Our life is never going to end, ever. Amen. You didn't hear me. He changed our outcome. You know what? He gave us more life than energy. I love seeing the Energizer Bunny. I've always, I see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, but he gave us more life than He gave us eternal life. He gave you something that boggles and still does to this day boggles people's mind called eternal life. Why are you so happy for? Because I have eternal life. I'm never going to die. People say, you're, you're crazy. I am, but I'm never going to die because I know who he is and I believe that in the one that turned the water into wine. Do you believe in the one tonight that turned the water into wine? I was preaching one time in a prison service and there's a bunch of wine. No, I'm sorry. It's not a prison service, but it's a, it's a mission one night. And, and I've said this maybe twice in my life and I'll never forget this. And I don't know why I just felt led to say it. So he wants me to say it, so I'll say it. And there's a bunch of, uh, uh, God began to reveal to me through the gifts that there was people in there in the service. And they were big on giving stuff in the missions. I'm not against giving stuff. But I, I praise God they got blankets. I praise God they got a place to sleep and they got food. But the most important thing is, is their souls. Amen. So the, I, this is the last time they ever let me preach in a mission. I made all, they were all there, all their leaders and elders, players, probably. Huh? But I began to know through the gifts of spirit that these guys had dope and, and they had their mad dog. Now, I mean, God's calling all this out. And, and, he, and I remember that, uh, and I began to preach, and I, here's what I said. I said, you know, I said, God needs to turn some of your all's wine back into water. Amen. He needs to change it and turn Amen. it back into water. Amen. amen. Hallelujah, preacher. Amen. I didn't get no amen. But they come in droves that night, 27 of them, and, and, and you know, and you wouldn't, and, but, but right here, that was it for me. That was the last night. But, you know, Jesus said, you know, if everybody speaks well of you, you know, beware of those kinds of people. Everybody speaks well of you. Because when you got the power of God in your life, you'll tell truth, and truth will either destroy you or it'll set you free. It, there's no in-between. You'll either do what he says, remember what she said, whatever he says, do, do it, or you won't do what he says. Everybody in here, including myself, tonight, the greatest point is, this again, is we have a choice. We have a choice to believe on him. We have a choice to become his disciples. We have a choice 
to not to fall in. You, you, you'll never be